Hey everyone, Amber here. Welcome back. In today's video, I wanted to share with you guys how to make this really cute goodie box. So you could use this box for so many different things. You could use it to send some happy mail to a friend, to use as storage in your craft space, or to put some candies or chocolates in it and give it to someone special to you. It is so adorable and the possibilities of what to use it for are endless. So this box looks like this all the way around. I like to think of it as like a little tower of goodies because um, it just stands up like a little tower and it's so adorable. And this box is super interactive which is really fun. I am loving interactive projects lately. So here on the front of the box if you will, I added a little closure. It doesn't really keep the box closed because the lid does that all on its own, but I wanted to give it a bit more flair. So I added a little Velcro closure, and when you take the lid off, I'm using this to keep some rosettes in, but when you take the lid off, you can then just pull it open, and then you have four little boxes to put whatever you want inside and I think it's so cute and so so fun. So that is pretty much the project and now I'm just going to go into all the paper that you're going to need to create this. I know it looks complicated but it's actually really really simple. Once you get the um, the lid, the box, and the little boxes made, you just have to put it together and it goes really fast. So, with all of that said, to make the base of your project, which is the part that will open up and hold all of the boxes, you will need a piece of paper that measures six and one eighth of an inch by 12 inches. To make the lid, you will need a piece that measures six and one eighth by six and one eighth inch. And then for all of the little boxes which are inside and those hold the goodies, you're going to need four pieces of paper. For this one, I used different patterns for each box, but for this one, I want to try using the same pattern for the boxes and see how that looks. So you're going to need four pieces that measure five and three quarters inch by five and three quarters inch. And then this is optional because like I said, it's a fake closure. It doesn't really hold a purpose, but if you want to add a little bit more decoration, you will need a strip of paper that measures one inch by 12 inches. And then a little square or tag or something that you can just fold in half to get this little um, piece here. So I'm just using this little cut apart from the carousel collection and you might have noticed I have already added stitching to all of my pieces of paper. Um, I'm obsessed with stitching. I've mentioned that in a couple of my last videos. I just love it. It's so fun. Um, I'm going through so much thread but I love it. So um, I've already scored my paper but I'm going to go over the measurements with you guys and as always, I will leave all of the measurements down in the description box so it's easier to kind of just follow um, along. I like having the measurements written down. It helps me. So the first step is to take your scoreboard. Mine is the We Are Memory Keepers trim and scoreboard. And I'm just going to take my base and for the base, I like to use double-sided paper. Obviously, the carousel collection isn't double-sided, so I just glue two pieces back to back. And I think it just gives the box a nicer, more finished look. So totally up to you, but um, just keep that in mind. And I'm going to score my base three times. So just put it in your scoreboard, and then you're going to score at three inches six inches and nine inches and that will give us four little rectangles to work with. For the lid of your box you want to score it at one and a half inch. Rotate your paper, score at one and a half inch 
and on the other two sides again score at one and a half inch so you're just scoring at one and a half inches on all four sides so super simple and the four little boxes are actually the same you're just going to score at one and a half inches on each side of all four of your boxes so super simple super quick and that makes this project super easy so i've already scored my other boxes and for the little strip of paper if you're including that just go ahead and score that at the same measurements you scored your base at which is three inches six inches and nine inches and then for your little tab um, which is going to be the little closure here um, just fold it in half or score it in half if you want to so I'll just do that later when I get to that point but that is all the scoring that you have to do again I'll leave all of that listed down below in the description box all right guys so once you have everything scored it's time to fold up on all of our score lines and do some cutting so that we can then assemble all of the boxes together so I'm just going to start with my base here and I'm just going to um, fold up and gently crease all of my score lines so that I have a very nice crisp crease. I'm just going to do that to all three of them. So after you do that, you'll see that you have something that can form this long box tower shape. So that is your base done, ready to go. Now we're going to work on the lid and the way that you assemble the lid and the boxes are the same. So I'll show you the lid and one box. So usually I would use double-sided tape to put these together, but I actually ran out of my double-sided tape without even realizing it. So um, when I went to the store, I didn't pick any up. So that will be picked up on my next shopping trip. So for now, I'm just going to use a glue stick. You can definitely use hot glue or wet glue or any adhesive that you have. So to put your lid together, you are going to, you'll see that you have four squares, one in each corner, and you just want to turn those into little wedges. So with your paper facing you, any which way, because it's a square, you just want to cut up on that score line and then stop when it meets the other score line or the corner here and then it will be separate from your paper and then you just want to cut a diagonal from the bottom here to the top corners so that you get a little wedge shape so then you have something that looks like this and then you're just going to rotate your paper and repeat that process so again, cut up on that score line and then turn that little square into a wedge. And we are just going to do the same for the other two. So rotate, cut, and wedge. And then the last one, rotate, cut, and wedge. So the process you just did for the lid is the same exact one you're going to do for all four of your boxes. So I'm just going to cut those now and then we'll assemble them all together. So again, with your paper facing you any which way, because it's a square and it's all the same score lines, you just want to cut up to separate that square from the rest and then turn it into a little wedge by cutting at a diagonal from the bottom of the square to the upper score line there. And then you're going to rotate your paper and just repeat that process all the way around on all of your boxes. So I know it might seem a little complicated, but um, it's all just about repeating 
the same pattern of cutting over and over and over again. <laughs> so it's not really complicated, it's more just a tedious process. So now that I've showed you how to do it on the lid and this one box, I am going to do the rest of my boxes and then I will be right back to show you how to assemble them together. Alright guys, so I have cut little wedges into all of my boxes. So now it's time to assemble the lid and the boxes and again we're going to be doing it the same way. So I'm going to take my adhesive and have that on hand and the first thing I'm going to do is fold on all of my score lines. So I like to start by folding the little wedges. You can definitely fold before you cut if you prefer that. I just like to cut when the paper is nice and straight and then fold after. Okay, so now that I have folded all of my score lines, I'm just going to fold all of these wedges over because that is where we are going to be adding our adhesive. So I'm just going to add some glue here and then I will fold the wedge up against the inside part of the rectangle next to it and then just adhere it together and then I will take this one apply some adhesive and again just fold it up to the inside of the rectangle next to it and adhere it together and just repeat that for the other two sides so this is why I like using double-sided tape because I can just add all of the tape at once and then peel it off as I go um, I just think it's a bit more <laughs> tricky when you're using a glue stick or something because it can get a bit messy so um, I'm just going to apply a nice layer of glue because we want it to hold together to this wedge here and then again just folding it up and folding that rectangle over to meet it and make sure that you get a nice corner here that there's no overlapping or anything and then I like to just take my scoring tool and make sure that it's nice and adhered before I move on to the next one. So again, taking some glue, adding a nice layer, and then I'm going to fold that wedge up, meet it up with that rectangle, make sure the corner is nice and neat, and then just secure it down. And now I'm just going to repeat that process with the last two little wedges that we have here. And then adding glue to this last wedge is a little bit tricky. Um, so I just like to fold it in and then try not to get the glue anywhere else and then just finish off the box by meeting that last wedge up with the last side and then securing it down and now your lid is done and you can see that when you take your box here you can fit your lid over it and then you have something that looks like this and this side is going to fall in right now because we don't have our boxes in there but um, it'll look all nice and <laughs> um, tidy once we get that done. So now to do the four boxes on the inside it's the same exact way so I'm just going to go over doing one with you guys again and then um, if you got this part down, go ahead and just skip forward to putting the boxes inside your tower. Um, but if you want to just see the process again, I will do that for you guys. So I'm going to start by folding up on all of the score lines. Fold all of our little tabs in. And then once again, just apply some glue 
and then fold it up to meet that side there. So once you get this process down, making any box or any lid or anything like that becomes so easy. Um, I remember the first time that I tried this process, I was not that great at it. Um, kind of struggled with getting all the little wedges and everything right. And now it's like second nature. So just practice. You can practice on some cardstock or something if you don't want to risk ruining any pretty paper. So I've got most of mine, my tabs glued down already. Just going to finish off the last two here. And just remember to keep those corners nice and neat. And then again, just getting the last little wedge here. And finishing off our first little box, which is so cute. I love how tiny these little boxes are. Um, but for how small they are, they do hold a good amount of stuff. So that is our first box done. And I'm just going to do the other three and then I will be back to show you guys how to put them in that little stackable um, tower shape. Okay guys, so I have all four of my little boxes made. They're still drying, but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to get in <laughs> to putting it together. So I'm just going to set my lid aside, unfold my base, and all you want to do to put this together is you're going to take one of your boxes and on the leftmost side you are going to adhere it right along the bottom edge. And um, these boxes are a bit smaller than each section that we have, so just make sure there's an even amount of leftover paper on each side, but just adhere it right up against the bottom edge there. And then the next box, um, I like to eyeball this. You can definitely measure it out if you want it to um, be super, super clean and everything. Um, I just like to eyeball it. So the next one will go right above that. And um, as you're adhering it down, that's why a uh, glue stick is kind of good in this situation because it doesn't dry instantly. So if it's um, not folding in properly, you can kind of move it around. But you just want to make sure that it's going to fold over that square next to it without getting stuck or without giving any kind of yielding or anything because you want it to be nice and smooth. And then the next one will go right above that one. And then the final one will go right at the top on the rightmost panel. So I'm going to start with the leftmost here and I added stitching before I started filming to my three sides here because you're not going to see the bottom or this fourth side. So I just added some as decoration to these three sides. And now I'm just going to add some glue. And then you just want to adhere it right up against the edge because this is going to be the bottom of our box. And then it's very important to make sure that it is firmly glued into place. So again, I'm just taking my scoring tool. You could use your fingers or a bone folder and just smooth everything out so that the glue really sticks the papers together. And now we have our first box in place. So the next one, I'm going to add some more glue. And then I'm just going to take it and eyeball where it needs to be so that it just folds 
over this one perfectly. So I think I could go down a little bit more. So just keep um, kind of practicing before you definitely glue it down. So I think this spot is good. And then just double check. Now I'm going to take the third box, add some adhesive. And again, just eyeball it. And always remember to make sure there's an even amount of paper left on either side of the box. That looks good to me, but before I secure that down, I'm going to add my fourth box on just to make sure that they all fit nicely. And this one is going to be adhered right up to the very top edge here. So I will go ahead and secure that one down since I know it has to be there. And then this one, just checking. So that one needs to go down a little bit. And that looks good. So just make sure that it's straight. for the big test to see if it closes. Um, and I used glitter paper, which is making it sound really scratchy when it closes. So maybe uh, just keep in mind not to use glitter paper unless you don't mind the noise. But you should be able to fold it into that little um, tower shape. I don't really know what to call this. And all of the boxes should be able to move freely and mine seem to be decent, so I'm going to call that good. And now we can just close it up for now, put the lid on and just let those, um, those sides dry. And while that is going on, I'm going to add my closure um, just to give it a bit more decoration. So I already added the score lines that we are going to need to this earlier. So I'm just going to fold up on those. And then we are just going to glue it starting from this um, part that doesn't, um, it's not like sealed together. I'm just going to add the end of the paper and then I'm going to wrap it all the way around the box so that it meets back up here. So just going to add some glue to this little strip. And then I'm going to take the end of the strip here and you can put it anywhere you want. I kind of just like to keep it as centered as I can. And then I'm just going to wrap it around. All right, and now that it's wrapped around, I can take my scoring tool and just gently secure the strip into place. All right, so now we have our little strip in place. So now I'm going to take my little square cut apart that I'm going to be using as this little tab here. And I'm just going to fold that in half to start so that we have an even amount of it on either side. And then it will fit onto the box like so. 
So you can use something however big or however small you want as long as it touches both edges here. So I'm going to add some glue to one side of it. And then for the other side, I will use some Velcro so that way it can be opened. So I'm just going to even this out and just secure it into place. And then I will take some Velcro and just add it to the other side. Just going to add it to the strip itself. This Velcro is super sticky. This didn't have quite enough time to dry. So just add that there. And then I'm just going to fold this over and secure it to the other side of the Velcro. So that way when I go to remove it, it'll just come off easily. So that is how you add the little strip on. And then your box is pretty much done and ready to go. All you need to do is decorate it and add the goodies. So I'm going to do the decorating process off camera and then I will be back to show you guys the finished project and just show you what it looks like. All right guys, here is the finished project. I think it's so fun. I love the carousel collection so much. Um, this is going to be perfect for summer. And um, I just decorated up this little side part here like I did over here. On this one, I did not decorate the lid just because I added so much here that I thought it might look a little too much if I did decorate the lid. So I did add a button here like I did on this one as well. And when you take the lid off and unvelcro it, this is what the inside looks like. So on this side, I just added some ephemera bits, some little enamel dots, a gold star, and then a flare piece. And over here, hopefully you can see it, I just added an ice cream little die cut and a gold star. So this one I thought was really fun on its own, so I didn't add too much decoration over here. And then on each little box, I just added some little labels or little ephemera pieces. So on these two, I added some tickets, and on these two, I added some labels. And once I know who this is going for and what I'm going to be including in this little Happy Mail piece, I will add um, some little labels saying what's inside the little box. But that is pretty much the finished project for now. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. If you have any questions or comments regarding how to make this project, please feel free to leave them down below in the comment section and I will get back to you. Once again, all the information will be listed below in the description box, so um, be sure to check that out for all of the measurements. If you guys do decide to make a little project like this, I would love to see, so please feel free to tag me on Instagram at Bambi's Mail, and um, I would just love to see what you create. I think it's really fun to see how everyone puts their own spin on a project. And yeah, I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Take care and happy crafting. Bye.